It's Championship Sunday on Tournament Central at the Preserve Championship, connected by Microsoft Teams halfway through the day, and one champion already crowned. Hoisting the trophy, well, about the size that she is, the great big bear. It's Missy Gannon bringing down another championship on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Missy, congratulations. Thanks for joining us. Have the the buzz of winning. Does it ever wear off? Has it worn off in the in the five or ten minutes since you ho hoisted that trophy? No, oh, I'm so I'm just so happy right now. And um, this is a, an event that I've loved coming to. And, you know, I've gotten a podium here before and I feel like I've played really well here. And so to finally hoist that bear, really feel how heavy it is, um, felt really amazing. Missy, you were so candid yesterday after your round, letting us in on how you were feeling and that you weren't feeling uh, your normal self all through Saturday's round and you were so glad that you felt better today. I want to ask you, how did you get over uh, that migraine? I know a lot of people that deal with migraines. I have had migraines. Everybody's formula for getting better is different. You managed to accomplish that feat in less than 24 hours. What did you do? Yeah, um, I've been dealing with migraines my entire life, unfortunately. Um, you know, not super often, but often enough that I kind of have uh, a game plan when I when one comes sneaking up on me. Unfortunately, I don't typically wake up with them. Um, every once in a while I do, but um, I think it was the humidity and, you know, the, the air pressure, um, you know, from the, the rain coming in that I woke up with a little bit of um, head congestion and that just turned into a migraine. And I, I tried taking all the, the precautions and, uh, you know, all the things that I've learned over the years, uh, but nothing, nothing quite could work before 10 a.m. So, um, yeah, it was uh, not not a fun day for me, and I kind of was just in zombie mode and just I, you know, had to just push through. Um, and you know, actually, it was a decent round, and I don't know how I did it. I I ended up right after the round, I still signed some autographs as low energy as I was, and I just went back to the camper and I slept until 9 p.m. Um, wow. And I finally woke up and I ate something and basically went right back to bed after that. So uh, yeah, it's usually only a one day thing, thankfully, um, but it's a it's a pretty terrible 12 or so hours. Ugh. Well, it worked. You showed up today ready to play. I want to ask you about your mentality about halfway through the round at the at the turn, as they say, heading to hole number 10. You had lost the lead officially. You're heading to the 10th. You're now down one. What was the mentality knowing that you had just half a round left to go and knowing that yesterday maybe you couldn't rely too much on what you might remember, or what you might have felt during the course of that round? What were you thinking? Um, I, I'm such a patient player, um, which is funny because I'm not really a patient person in life. <laughs> um, <laughs> but for some reason, disc golf just bring brings that out in me and I, I never lose hope. Um, you know, one stroke is is really nothing um, that could happen in one hole. It could happen down the stretch on 18 for, you know, it, you just never know. Um, so I just have to keep my head down and just focus on the next shot and not try to get, you know, overwhelmed or ahead of myself and um, just try to keep the anxiety low. Um, it's easier said than done. But at this point in my career, I've had to do it so many times that, um, you know, I just have found what, what's worked for me. And um, yeah, just just staying calm and. Thankfully, that, that worked out for me in the end. We've heard that from you before. It's a big part of how you choose to play the game, staying calm, going shot for shot. But in an instance like this, you're in a very specific battle with one other player. And it's to the viewer, it's like each of you are throwing punches, taking punches, hitting back. I mean, how do you contrast that fighter mentality and the mentality of being in a battle with trying to stay calm. How do you contrast that in terms of being ready to hit back or take advantage of a situation? Yeah, um, I don't know. You know, I, I have just such confidence in my in my game. And, um, you know, Hall and I are friends off the course and we're just as competitive off the course as we are on the course. So, you know, there's a little bit of like 
um, I, I feel like it's almost a little amplified. Uh, we both are such competitors and we want to win, but you know, we both respect one another as well. So um, it's really fun to be in a battle with somebody that you like and that somebody that you respect and somebody that you know you're going to have to play your best against. Um, so, you know, I, I think she feels the same way, but um, yeah, it's just, it sort of just makes it that much more exciting. And I'm glad that it, I'm glad that it turned into a battle in the end. Um, and, you know, I, I, I came out on top, but, uh, you know, it's, it's the experience for both of us is only going to make us both better. And I think that, you know, it's only the beginning for both of us. When you're in a battle with another person, I, I'm not going to imply that you, Miss Gannon, have any enemies on tour, but you've got people that you're friends with and people that maybe you're not as close to. Is it easier or harder to go into this battle against a friend, knowing that in this case, in order for you to win, they have to stumble, they have to lose. D does that come into the equation at all? Um, no, not really. I, I, you know, I think that we're both very skillful. I, like, I think that both of us could make mistakes, but um, I think we're both really uh, confident in our skill set, and I, and I don't think that either one of us really has like any major advantages. Um, you know, she might have a couple of more advantages when it comes to the the distance and and the forehand, but you know where I kind of overcome that is through my mental game and, you know, being able to make putts and I, I'm, I throw pretty far myself. So, um, yeah, I, I, it's all the same, honestly, it doesn't matter who it is. I just think that it's a little bit more amplified when it's somebody that you, um, you know, you like competing with and, uh, Holland's that person for me. Missy, here we are at roughly the halfway mark of the season. You've got a major championship in your back pocket. You've now got more than one win on the Disc Golf Pro Tour uh, with your name written on the trophy, or in this case, your initials carved into the trophy. You're going into the second half of the season now, and they say successful people are very specific with their goals. How specific can you be with the goals that you have for what you want to accomplish in the second half of the season? Um, you know, I'm just, I'm so proud of what I've already done. Um, but like I said, I'm a really competitive person, so it's not, nothing's ever enough for me. Um, but you know, obviously a world title would be kind of the next goal. Um, but I really got to stay focused on the next event and go and try to win Des Moines and head over to Europe and go to try to try, try to do my best over there. Um, you know, another major at the European open and, uh, you know, I, it's, it's really just focusing on the next one, but obviously a world title would be uh, would be huge for me. Well, you, in your own words, and you're exactly right, you've already had a very impressive season. Now you've got a whole nother half of a year to build on that. So congratulations for this, your most recent of accomplishments. Best of luck down the road. Thanks, Grant.